With most teachers, especially my advanced classes, they want us to do something solely there specifically or a specific way while given in a textbook. Right. While whenever we come to this class, we're able to create a project mainly on our own, by, on our own, with our own ideas. We can like add and adjust whatever we want. Of course, we still have a goal to set, but we can all achieve it in a different way. Here's the current bear distribution. Here's what it's grown in the past 10 years. And then take it a step farther and say, okay, what about you? Where are your bear sightings? If you're a hunter, where have you harvested bears? And have a live map that's recording the information people can survey and put in and give residents of Virginia a big picture. The idea for Virginia and future management plans isn't just saying, oh, let's bring elk in, but instead saying, what if we slowly introduce the natural ecosystems and not just look at it from, okay, I can bring in, uh, you know, a thousand elk with a survival rate of 50%, but instead look at it geographically, say, okay, we have key habitats here for elk to survive and live and not run into human interaction and put them there and kind of use this as the model for that. We typically have like independent projects that we work on. Sometimes we'll have like a class instruction, but usually it's just everyone kind of works in partners or groups or individually on working on a specific project. Right now I'm working on a project analyzing air quality in relation to some of the wildfires in California. So I'm trying to find out um, where I can get data for that and work on it for my final project. We're taught a skill and then assigned a project, and that project is most of like the learning that's happening, right. is trying to go through problem solve, and if this doesn't work, how would you get around it? If this doesn't work, how would you get around it? Um, so I love problem solving, <laughs> so it's been very um, entertaining for me to go through and try to um, figure things out. I chose to study the like impacts of golf and fertilizer usage in the area on a local stream. So I was actually lucky enough to have Dr. Wagner here in the um, county to help me with GIS so I could um, plot my data um, on a map. And that was kind of really the basis of my project. When we come in, we'll usually get settled for a couple minutes and Ms. Chadwick will go over like what our plan is for the, for the day, what project we're working on, what our deadlines are for the project. And then we'll get our laptops out and start working on our projects. And if we run across any, Ms. Chadwick will be floating throughout the classroom. And if we run across any complications in our project, she'll come and help us troubleshoot it. All of the other students in the class try to help each other troubleshoot the issues as well. So like if say I ran into one issue and my friend was running through the same issue, I would go over and help her figure it out. Because my class is, I think, 27 students, so it's hard for Ms. Chadwick to get to every single student. Right. So it's a lot of teamwork and helping each other get the projects done. Then this year, I'm doing my project on if we need lockers in high school, and this school specifically, because out of our 2,000 students, only 186 students use lockers. So right now, I am I have sent out a survey to all of the students in science classes, because almost every student in the school takes a science class. I figured that's the best way to reach everyone, and my teacher's also a science teacher, so she has those connections to get the survey out. The survey is, did you use a locker all four years of high school? Why didn't you use your locker? Why did you use your locker? Then I've asked for their email so I can analyze their schedule. And right now I'm creating a map of the school and every locker in the school. And I'm going to create a heat map of the current locker usage as well as where the hallways are most populated throughout the day. Mm. So I can say, if we were to keep, say, 300 lockers, where would the best location be for those 300 lockers? And I'm also trying to justify if we should be spending the money to put new lockers into new high schools on County's building. What he does is he gives us a little uh, PowerPoint presentation during the beginning of the day, introducing either a new um, part of ArcGIS to us or like a new tool or whatnot. And we go through that and we practice with the tool using something related to current events. So when we first entered the school at the beginning of the year, the first assignment that we did after we had all of our uh, profiles and accounts set up was... Um, we did a uh, map analyzing Hurricane Irma's path. He, he really tries to like tie it into current topics. And I think that's why like when we were choosing our topics, it was a lot easier to understand because like, oh, this is what Mr. Solonsky does all the time. So right. like you do something along the lines of that. So this is a swipe tool. And what we have over here are the total, this map is the total opioid related deaths and this is the proportion of the deaths to the total deaths in the state. So what we did to find this layer was we edited the attribute layer, the attribute table of this layer 
to divide the deaths of 2013 by the entire population of 2013 in that state. And from there, we can see that certain states have an equal ratio, like, um, I think this one's right, yeah, like North Dakota. They had a high number of deaths to begin with, and their that proportion is equally as high. Hmm. But when we see something like California, the proportion is actually a lot lower mm -hmm. compared to other states. And so we thought this is a good way to kind of like equalize all the different states to say, yeah, it looks like California has so many, but in reality, the proportion is just the same as some of those smaller states. Because they have so many more people. Mm -hmm, yeah. Exactly. So the conclusion is sort of places like North Dakota, that's mm -hmm. where people should be focusing their right. efforts. Exactly. It was like an orientation for the class. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smolensky was introducing it to us and he told us like all those like visuals that you see, this is how you make them. And forget like on paper, you can make them online and you can make them interactive. It's very practical. It's very real world thinking. It's, hey, there was just a hurricane down in Texas. What would a damage map look like for this? What Can we track the path of a hurricane? It's very much ongoing and real. And it, it's just a lot easier to learn and a lot more interesting. Thank you.